I first was introduced to Whoa. I got an email from him, um, sent to me from my editor, and uh, in it he explained how he had recently been arrested, why he thought the arrest was unjust. He cited lots of penal code. Unplug your computer and come with me. All right, let's start. I'm recording now. Please identify yourself. Officer, do what you're told. And he attached an audio recording along with the email that I listened to, and it was very, it was very interesting. You can't stand get a up. citizen in order. Stand up. Officer A. Nelson. Stand up. That's number up. 50. Just go slowly. The recording was just really interesting. I said, well, who is this guy? And people started telling me about his doghouse, the box that he uses to, you know, get his ideas out. Do what you're told. Go, let's okay. go slowly. At this point, you're under arrest. I'm under arrest for what? What's the charge? For What's the charge, officer? We'll cover it in a minute. No, no, you'll cover it right now. What's no, the we'll charge? Cover it in a minute. A police officer does what he's told to do if he wants to keep his job. No matter what the Constitution says, no matter what his personal opinions are, no matter what his personal thoughts are, he'll do what he's told to do, or he doesn't work here anymore. I believe that in the past, the actions taken by Mountain View Police and the letters sent to him by the Mountain View City Attorney, Janie Quinn, have encouraged him and sort of put him on the defensive. Come this is a public facility. No, this is not. It's, it's a conference room. private conference room. You can't arrest me for being in a private conference room in Sit. City Hall. Sit. This is false arrest Sit. officer. Sit. No, you're being arrested for interfering with a police officer. I gave you a lawful order three times and you had disobeyed it. I'm a general. I'm a general fighting a war. And in my position, I cannot trust people. I'm not allowed to. Um, I trust people only to the extent that I need to trust them. This whole thing is, is, is now in the hands of teenagers. Whether it succeeds or fails will depend on the teenagers of Mountain View. And hopefully they will do their initial job so that it's in broader hands of all the teenagers in the Bay Area. Well, he definitely feels like he is um, he's waging a war. He feels like society is, is going to hell in a handbasket. And he takes issue with that. And he has his own vision of how it ought to be. And that's what he would like to see realized. It, a lot of it's theatrics. Underneath the surface conflict, the police, more than anyone else in Mountain View, understand what I'm doing. They understand the constitutional aspects of it because they have to. They have to know the law because they have to deal with it every day in their job. The police and I are really not opponents. The reality in Mountain View is that it's a deeply divided community. So we have these deep divisions, but we pretend that they don't exist. All along I've been warning him of what the city would do what the city's actions would be towards him and what would what the police actions would be towards him and basically I've been right all along for a couple of years when I've talked to police most of the time no matter what he puts on those signs they really can't arrest him for the content of the messages on those signs and I bring that up because he has the right to say all those things and he has the right to say them the way he's saying them. There are basically three phases. The first phase of Idea Farm Operations was the real message of don't be selfish and come eat with us. Idea Farm's ultimate mission and ultimate goal is sort of the most perplexing thing about him. It's the hardest thing to nail down. I solved the apathy problem by shifting into a much more in-your-face confrontational operating model. And that worked. You know, it woke people up. People are now reading the sign. I live on Ringstorf Avenue in Mountain View, okay? And he, he put his sign up on Ringstorf Avenue near Central Expressway, all right? And I drove by it, and I had seen his sign previously on El Camino Real near Castro Street when he had a truck. He had a truck back then, and he put a big sign up on it, and it said, Come eat with us. And I, you know, I thought, 
No, you know, I'm not going to go eat with anybody. The longer you spend talking to Idea Farm, the more perplexing of a person he seems to become. On the one hand, he's very intelligent. I mean, in the profile I did of him, I was able to confirm that he received a master's degree in economics from Chicago University. He came across some signs that caught my eye, okay, and they were, um, they were signs uh, expressing free speech and independence and, and uh, oh, uh, more things that I could relate to. It's a win-lose conflict with the city. And Idea Farm Operations plan for Mountain View is not, is not a pissing contest, pardon my language. It's basically a teenager-focused effect. Well, we're going to change the world through the teenagers. There's no question that he rubs the city the wrong way. I mean, he had his doghouse out in front of City Hall, you know, with lots of different messages on it. If they were so inclined to say really despicable things, they, they have a constitutional right to do it. I think there's seven words that they're not allowed to use, and there, there, there are certain a few restrictions on it. They can't threaten anybody. You can't threaten people, and you can't do certain things. We have the same goals. You know, Idea Farm Operations is, it could be something that's really cool for Mountain View. And so um, I think that the legal process is becoming much less confrontational. People are continuing to talk about resolution rather than winning the fight. Do I think he has a chance to actually affect the change that he says he would like to affect? I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about the feasibility of his ultimate goal. Imagine how much effect you can have as teenagers if you're organized, if you're connected, if you're watching. That's the exciting thing about this whole thing I'm going through is that now people are watching our institutions. The public defender, that's why I'm getting good service. It's because it's visible. It's because people are watching now. If nobody was watching, I wouldn't win. There's no way. The way I interpret Municipal Corporation when, when he says it is I think he views the city as operating like a corporation would operate, solely concerned about profit and perhaps less concerned about um, the best interests of the citizenry. I don't want to tell the teenagers what they're going to do in response. I, I, I will. I'll give you an answer. But I really don't care whether you do those things because all I'm doing is starting the conversation. I don't know what you should do about it. I want you to consider my plan as a starting point, and that is come together. While it's true that he's sometimes takes issues with the articles I write, in a recent phone conversation I had with him, he told me that uh, he used to get mad about it, but now he doesn't because he feels that in his case, no news is, is bad news. I think, in other words, any time he can get his message out through a media outlet, it's a good thing. He views that as a win. It's not that I'm a, a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy. But when you really care, if your heart is filled with love, there will not be room for fear. You cannot be both a loving person, person and a coward. It's, not, it's impossible. He suspected someone of vandalizing his equipment. He attempted to put them under citizen's arrest. If you ask him what happened, he, he'll say that he only used the amount of force that was necessary to restrain the person. Citizen's arrests are legal if the police determine that the arrest was justified. I think a person has a right to protect their property and has a right to make a citizen's arrest on someone who is damaging or, or stealing his property. I know that the city right now is thinking, how can we extract ourselves from this? What the hell's he got in his recordings? How did we get here? You know, all you have to do, one person, one homeless person that's got no money coming in, but he's pissed off. And I, since I'm educated, I have skills that they didn't know I had. The council, the city council, uh, 
has ideals for the city. They have personal ideals what they think this city should look like. And the people that are willing to commit their lives to an unselfish pattern of living, you do need to separate yourself from the others. It doesn't, it's oil and water, it won't mix. City of Mountain View does not get off people. They do not. Once they target a person in Mountain View, uh, they go after them. The pledge, which is not on the website, is this. It's very simple. Um, I pledge to be good news for all who come into contact with me, especially my um, co-workers and employer or my customers and employees. This pledge to be good news, to be a giver, not a taker, is the foundation of my plan to achieve economic success. My pledge is public so that you will encourage me to live up to it so that I might receive its economic benefits in full measure so that my success will encourage you and others to pledge to be good news.